So good morning, everyone. And I'm going to speak on the emerging threats in Asia. And uh, I'll be speaking on mucormycosis. I don't have any conflict of interest. So we know that the prevalence of mucormycosis is rising globally. So and especially in the Asian countries, when I talked about the India and the China, the prevalence of mucormycosis has increased tremendously. We have few uh, the, the evidence that the globally uh, the, the mucormycosis prevalence is increasing. So we have data from India, Iran, and Japan. So the, in India, the prevalence of mucormycosis uh, was from 24 or 7 persons in 1990 to 2007, which increases to the 89 cases in the year 2013 to 15. Similarly, from Iran, like from 9.7 in 2008 to 23.7 in 2014, so significant rise. And the Japan also reported uh, the increase from 0.01% of mucormycosis cases in 69 to 0.16 in uh, 1989. So the prevalence is rising globally. Uh, we know that mucormycosis is very challenging and difficult to treat. And to add more challenge, like we do see a large number of patients who has isolated renal mucormycosis and the mucormycosis in otherwise apparently immunocompetent host. There are various forms of mucormycosis and the most common forms of mucormycosis that we see in uh, the susceptible host is rhino orbital mucormycosis. This is very common, especially in a patient who has diabetes mellitus or the patient who has uh, received organ transplant and they are on uh, immunosuppression. But the patients with hematological malignancies, neutropenia, those patients who has received uh, the, the bone marrow transplantations and uh, they are neutropenic, in this patient's populations, the most common form of mucormycosis is a pulmonary one or the disseminated one. So neutropenic patients, hematology settings, you will see more of pulmonary while in diabetic patients and patients receiving immunosuppressives and organ transplant patients, you will see more of the rhino orbital uh, forms of mucormycosis. So this is the, uh, the studies from the, the India, which shows the same thing, that rhino orbital forms of mucormycosis is very common forms of mucormycosis in Indian populations, followed by uh, the, the cutaneous one and then pulmonary. Uh, the mucormycosis, uh, the publications from China, uh, it also showed uh, the, uh, the, the things that, I mean, they have more of a pulmonary mucormycosis in uh, all the hosts, like which includes the hematological malignancies as well as the diabetic mellitus. So this is uh, different from the, the patterns that we see in India, that uh, in China reported more of forms of uh, mucormycosis followed by uh, 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 the rhino orbital one and then cutaneous and the other uh, forms of mucormycosis. Looking, coming to the species which is responsible for the clinical mucormycosis, uh, these are the, the publications from the various country and the most common forms of mucormycosis, the most common species which is responsible for the mucormycosis is rhizopa species. And the other species which are less commonly implicated in the clinical mucormycosis. And these are the studies that I have compiled from the, the Indian publications. And what interestingly, apart from the, the rhizopus, which is very commonly isolated from the clinical uh, mucormycosis patients, we found that over a period of years from 2000 to 2020, we found that the rhizopus microsporus and the rhizopus homothelicus steadily increases as a cause of uh, mucormycosis in Indian populations. And this is uh, very interesting. And recently, the Professor Chakravarti and his team has conducted to look at the characterization of the clinical mucormycosis because of the rhizopus homothelicus. And what they found that uh, the homothelicus account for almost 6.8% uh, uh, of the patients in uh, their uh, cohort of the mucormycosis of 631. And the, the, when they compared the clinical outcome of rhizopus homothelicus with versus rhizopus erysus. And they found that rhizopus homothelicus was independently associated with a better survival. So probably it is a less virulent as compared to the rhizopus erysus. 
And uh, uh, I mean, they, they have adjusted uh, after uh, adjusting the age, intracranial involvement, and the surgical therapy. So all the patients, they received a standard therapy, and we know the prognostic markers. Those patients who has advancing age or intracranial extensions, they do have poor prognosis. And those patients who has not received a debridement or the surgical therapy to debulking the, the lesions. So after adjusting all these important parameters, the rhizopus homothelicus was associated with the better survival. And they also checked for the in vitro drug susceptibility testing and found that it is fairly sensitive to almost all the available antifungal agents. Now coming to the, the, the China. Uh, here, like the, the most common species, like we described rhizopus uh, very commonly in mucormycosis. China reported mucor species uh, as a cause of mucormycosis, very common, followed by the rhizopus. So there is a difference in the species involved in the mucorales in uh, China. Again, the, uh, we have already I mean, talked about this, that diabetes mellitus is a very important risk factor in uh, the developing countries, while the hematological malignancies and the neutropenia is very commonly seen in the developed countries like Europe and the, the United States. Now, coming to the very important challenge that we are facing in the Asian countries, and that is a mucormycosis in otherwise immunocompetent host. So in various studies from India, like we have multiple studies on mucormycosis from India, and they have reported 3 to 26% of the mucormycosis cases in apparently healthy or the immunocompetent host. And this includes the, the cutaneous, that is necrotizing fasciitis. And most of these patients, they are the victims of road traffic accidents. They have extensive contaminated wounds, and they end up with a necrotizing fasciitis because of mucormycosis. The another important the, the mucormycosis form that we are increasingly seen in our clinical practice is isolated renal mucormycosis. The patient with the isolated renal mucormycosis are otherwise apparently healthy. They do not have any comorbid conditions. They are young people. They are coming from a community. No history of trauma, no history of any urosurgical interventions or no uh, any other the medical uh, conditions. And, but despite that, like apparently healthy, they develop isolated renal mucormycosis. And we have three big series published on isolated renal mucormycosis from India. The one is from SCPGI uh, with uh, 10 patients, and the second is from PGI, uh, 15 patients, and the third is from uh, Jodhpur Ames. So we'll discuss Jodhpur Ames separately because they have included COVID patients with isolated renal mucormycosis also. So in a study from SCPGI, both, are, both these institutes are situated in the northern part of India. So they conducted study between 2009 to 2016. And what they found that all the young people are involved. So age is from 10 to, 10 to 42. And in PGI, like age is from 16 to 50, uh, 50 years. All were male patients in SCPGI uh, study, while 86% of the patients were male from the PGI study. The species, uh, they, they have isolated uh, in six patients out of 10, and the rhizopus was isolated in the three, and the apophysomyces elegans on three. While from the PGI, like all the patients had a rhizopus species uh, for renal mucormycosis. The renal involvement was bilateral in SGPGI uh, cases, while 11 patients had a unilateral, and the four had bilateral renal involvement from the study from the PGI. The mortality was very high, almost half of the patients, they died. And most of these patients, they are coming from the rural area, and they are from the lower socioeconomical strata. So I, I described that, I mean, the, uh, the, the patients generally present, these are the healthy patients, they generally pre present with the acute onset of the flank pain, hematuria, and uh, they have fever and they rapidly progress to the sepsis and uh, acute kidney injury and the renal failure requiring uh, dialysis. They have repeated sterile urine culture, that blood culture remains sterile, and when you do an ultrasound or the CT scan examination, you will find a bulky kidney with the areas of hypodensity, so areas of necrosis or the infarctions. These patients can have either renal arterial thrombosis or the renal venous thrombosis on uh, the radio imaging and you may found the features of uh, the pyelonephritis or the, uh, the uh, increase uh, the enhancement into the perinephric region. Uh, 
The amphotericin B plus nephrectomy is a treatment of choice. Uh, some uh, researchers have also tried the local uh, amphotericin B through the PCNL. And this is a CT scan of uh, the typical patient who has isolated renal mucormycosis. You can see there is a bulky kidney, there is a large area of abscesses or the areas of infarction, and they have acute onset. And this is a study from Jodhpur Ames where they also looked at the renal mucormycosis in COVID-19 patients. So their study was the most recent one from March to September 2021. They had 11 patients with isolated renal mucormycosis. Eight patients were male, so the majority of the patients were male, and the age is less than 50 years in 81% of the patients, so all were young patients. Two patients had underlying risk factors, that is diabetes and ulcerative colitis. That patient was receiving steroids. The four patient had history of COVID-19 in past six months, right? So probably we may say that, I mean, it is not uh, appropriately fitting well into the definitions of COVID-associated mucormycosis, and their mortality is also around 50%. We know that mucorale many a times like it's very difficult to diagnose, mainly because of the non-specific clinical features. And this is not specific for mucormycosis. Most of the invasive fungal infection, they do have non-specific clinical uh, presentation. So we need to keep very high index of suspicions to uh, support a diagnosis from variety of their clinical presentations. Either it could be a rhino orbital one, or the pulmonary mucormycosis, or the patient who has uh, the, the disseminated one. So I'm not going to discuss detail about the how to diagnose, but let me uh, take you to the COVID-associated mucormycosis. And this COVID pandemic has uh, set a perfect epidemiological triangle because we have more susceptible hosts, that is COVID-19 infected patients. We have virulent pathogens available into our environment. We have uh, several aerodynamic studies. We have looked into the spore counts. And the pathogens is available. We have susceptible host. And the favorable environment that is uncontrolled diabetes or increase in the blood sugar, new onset diabetes, steroids therapy has provided uh, the appropriate uh, favorable environment and that leads to the COVID associated mycosis outbreaks into the India. When we looked into the literature uh, publications on CAM or the COVID associated mycosis, it was first described from the United Kingdom in April 2020, so long back, so before the outbreak has set in into the India. And it was from the post-mortem study and this patient has a disseminated mucormycosis. After that, there are several case reports from the multiple countries, but India had a too large, too big surge of covid associated mucormycosis from September to December 2020 and April to July 2021, where we have large number of covid associated mucormycosis and we have reported more than 40, 50,000 of the patients. The CAM prevalence was 0 0.03 in Turkey, 0 0.35 in Pakistan, 0 0.27 in India hospitalized patients, and 0 0.04 in Mexico and uh, amongst the hospitalized patients. We have a very large study on COVID-associated mucormycosis by the Ophthalmology Society and Ophthalmology Group. And they try to look at the, the burden of COVID infections into the India and the burden of uh, the CAM into the India. And you can see that there is a distinct discordance. I, I, it's not working. But you can see that there is a distinct discordance between the burden of the COVID cases. I think my pointer is working. Is not there? OK. So say, for example, look into the, the extreme, uh, the, the Western state that is Gujarat, where the, the burden of the COVID cases is, uh, is marked as a uh, yellow, but look at the burden of the CAM cases that is marked as a dark red. So we have a very high burden of COVID-associated mucormycosis. At the same time, it was not correlating well with the burden of mucormycosis, I mean, the, the COVID-infected cases. So we have a significant discordance between the burden of COVID cases and the COVID-associated mucormycosis cases. This is the first publication from our the Fungal Infection Study Forum from India, and we looked at into the, and we tried to describe and looked at the, the burden of COVID associated mucormycosis, and we compared the burden of mucormycosis from the participating centers into the previous year. And we found that there is a distinct increase in the number of COVID associated mucormycosis uh, in uh, uh, the participating centers from the same 
uh, study period time. So it was 139 increments uh, as compared to the previous uh, mucormycosis from the same study center. So we have discussed a lot about the, the risk factors, and this is a single center study. We do have a multi-center study on the risk factors of COVID-associated mucormycosis. Yesterday also we uh, talked about this. Uh, the important risk factors that we found, apart from the COVID virus itself, because COVID can have potential to uh, the leads to the increased susceptibility to mucormycosis by increasing the, the, the glucose-regulated protein uh, expression and which is a receptor for a mucormycosis. So the, uh, it will facilitate the entry and the infections as well as the invasions by the mucorales into uh, the susceptible patients. So COVID could be a, a very important risk factor for mucormycosis, but apart from this, we found that the patient who develops a diabetes, uh, or the, we can say the new onset diabetes, they are at a very high risk of uh, development of mucormycosis as compared to the patient who has a known case of diabetes and they are taking uh, anti-diabetic treatment. We also found that the patient who received a home isolation care and the most of the patient who has a mild infection, the doctors generally advocate the home isolation care. They prescribe some uh, the supportive medications and their new onset diabetes goes undetected because these patients are in isolation for at least two weeks during the initial phase of the COVID-19 outbreak. And during these two weeks time, they are exposed to the, 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 the spores that is from the environment and they are having a very high uncontrolled sugar which was undetected, untreated. And that could be a reason that these home isolated patients, they have very high uh, the risk for development of mucormycosis as compared to the patient who received hospitalized treatment where their blood sugars are monitored where they received appropriate therapy to control the sugar. And of course, steroids, because we know that steroids is a very important risk factor for mucormycosis. And these patients, they also receive steroids for their hypoxia. And few of the patients, they also receive very high indiscriminate dose of uh, steroids, and which is probably uh, additional risk factors for mucormycosis in this group of the patients. We also try to look at into this case control study, look at the severity of COVID-19 and the association of COVID-associated mucormycosis. And we do not find any association between the severity of COVID-19 and the development of mucormycosis in this group of the patients. We also check for the tocilizumab because uh, it is also uh, used in, especially in a patient who has a severe cytokine storm. And we found that there is no association of use of tocilizumab uh, for uh, the development of mucormycosis. And in fact, the more uh, the controls they have used tocilizumab as compared to the cases. We also check for the oxygen therapy because all these hospitalized patients, they require uh, for uh, oxygen therapy for their hypoxemia and oxygen did not have any relations to uh, COVID associated mucormycosis in this single center study. So coming to the question, why India has a very high burden of COVID-associated mucormycosis as compared to the other countries in the world where uh, the COVID was uh, in a similar frequency? They do have diabetic patients like Mexico, Brazil, Ch China, where the diabetic population is high. So we thought that probably our diabetic patients, we have the largest number of diabetic patients globally. The new onset diabetes was a major concern for the development of CAMP. The steroid usage in India, like the in initial uh, the phase of the outbreak, the several patient has received extended or the higher dose of corticosteroids. Probably that has leads to the additional uh, the risk to, for the CA. And we do have very high environmental spore counts. So I I am quoting two studies. One study was the, uh, conducted before COVID, and the second study was conducted during COVID. And both the studies reported uh, the higher spore counts of uh, mucorales into the environment. And we know that the, the, the kitchen waste, the garbage, and these are the potential source for uh, the mucorales, and it is abundant into the society or nearby the, uh, the house. So these patients, those who are home isolated, are exposed to the kitchen waste, uh, the, the spores from the kitchen waste, and probably they acquired COVID-associated mucormycosis at the home. There is also seasonal variations and the different uh, spore count in different zones of India. And probably that represents that why the India has a different uh, COVID-associated mucormycosis burden in the different states. 
in the, the globally, like, I mean, there was a noise about the cow dung that, uh, that was burnt uh, in day-to-day -day activities in India, and probably that, is, that was responsible for the COVID-associated mycormycosis. So just to, I mean, uh, give proper answer, the systematic study was conducted by Professor Chakravarti and his group. And they have clearly demonstrated, they have done aerodynamics, uh, aerosurveillance study. Uh, and they clearly looked into the environmental spore counts before burning of the cow dung, during burning, and after burning. And they could not find any increase in the environmental spore counts uh, of using a cow dung. And the important thing, important message from this study was that apart from there is no increase in the spore count, the species that they have isolated from the cow dung, fresh or the dried one, is most common would be lecthemia. And we know that like rhizopus is the most common fungus that we found, uh, most common species that we found in mucormycosis in India, and it's not a lecthemia. So the, the most common, the, the, uh, the mucorella species that were seen from the cow dung was lecthemia. So probably cow dung was not uh, associated with the increased use of uh, mucormycosis in India. There are several treatment challenges. I don't think that we can discuss it now. And uh, this is one interesting study published recently from the CMC Valor. Uh, and they looked at the shorter cost, because India has uh, the shortage of the amphotericin B uh, during the COVID-associated mycormycosis outbreak. This was number one. The second challenge would be like, this drug is very toxic. This drug is very expensive. And it's difficult to give a prolonged infusions of amphotericin for four to six pack time. So this is a study uh, from the CMC. They have looked into the shorter course of amphotericin B, that is one to two weeks, and they have compared the outcome with uh, the, the patient who received two to four weeks of uh, amphotericin B, followed by the step-down posaconazole tablet version. And in this study, they have selected those patients who has a restricted disease. Restricted disease means the disease is restricted to the perinasal sinus, and patients do not have any extension into the intracranial cavity. So those patients who has the extension, they received a probably longer therapy, and the, the restricted disease, they received a shorter therapy. And they checked the primary outcome. And uh, the in short course therapy, uh, median 13 days of amphotericin has been received. Uh, and the treatment success was 93%. And long course therapy, the patient received uh, 22 days of therapy. And the treatment success was 62. And the predicts, predictors of mortality were the standard predictors, that is age, diabetic ketoacidosis, stroke, uh, HbA1c high, and the CNS involvement. So I think we can also look for the shorter course of amphotericin B therapy to a patient, especially who has a restricted disease rather than a patient is having dissemination to the local or to the uh, other organs. So uh, another important treatment challenge that uh, Professor Chakravarti has highlighted yesterday also and today also is the patient who cannot afford therapy and they left hospital against medical advice. So to summarize these emerging threats in Asia about mucormycosis, the Asian countries has a higher case burdens of mucormycosis as compared to uh, the other countries. The diabetes is a leading risk factor for mucormycosis in Asian countries. The rhizopus arises is the most common species isolated from India uh, as a cause of mucormycosis. And uh, the infection with microsporus and the homothelicus is rising in India. And we, we have seen the, in recent study that homothelicus is probably a less virulent as compared to the arises. The another important challenge that we are still uh, facing is isolated renal mucormycosis in immunocompetent and healthy host. So that is, I think, big challenge. Why this patient develops? We need to do a systematic uh, the research to identify the potential risk factors and the potential pathogenesis of uh, renal mucormycosis. And we know that there is expensive and a prolonged therapy required for the treatment of mucormycosis. So we need to have some good uh, data, good study, which, by which we can shorten the course of uh, amphotericin B. Thank you very much for the patient's listening.